One of the best ways to learn about photography is to listen to other photographers explain their work and processes. In this video, one of my favorite LEGO photographers, Shannon Spruill, walks us through a selection of his photos. In my creativity, I'm kind of really lazy. So I do tend to take shortcuts a lot. And I find that the camera just suits that perfectly. <laughs> it suits my nature, sort of. I want to do things quick and efficient. And if, if I get an idea, it's like this all-consuming idea and I have to do it right now, the quickest way I can. And, and I can focus on minifigures and I can focus on the, on the shadows and I don't have to think too much about the camera or the system that I'm using to capture it. To try and capture like a really, things like I really love really strong slanting diagonal shadows and lights like on a wall. I just love how the shape of shadows can be sort of almost, I guess, like a graphic. It's like the shadows and the Lego are all pieces in the photo. That's a classic one I got I stole from Alex Ilo. I don't know if he was the first, but he was the first person that I noticed to use that technique. He would use it to filter lights usually coming down. Those eight by eight modified plates and they have like a grill pattern through them. They're great. They throw like really great shadows down. That sort of evolved kind of naturally too, because I was doing the classic thing, building an intricate mock and then going to get a shot and feeling like, ah, oh, if I could pop off the roof or that left wall, I can shine more light in there, but I can't, it's all, it's stuck down. Being a bit frustrated with that. At the moment, most of the scenes I'm doing, the background to the minifigures is, is more or less loose. I can move things really easily. I can put like a palm tree leaf piece so it's right behind a minifigure's head, so it frames the head nicely. So not much is stuck down. And that helps with the lighting too. I can move walls in and out. And that's been like a, a bit of a revelation. The other thing with that too was I was finding that sometimes, especially when you've got lighting where there's lots of shadow, a lot of the details in the mock, in the background, get lost in the shadow. So it seemed a bit kind of redundant putting a couple of hours into like a really nice looking bookshelf or something. And if that bookshelf is 90% in shadow and you're looking at a minifigure anyway, it didn't seem much point to sort of put that much time into this intricate build. So I find that my buildings become simplified as well. And it's all to do with what's the camera seeing. When I do those test shots where I just kind of quickly throw up a few pieces, a few background items, put, put the minifigure in front, chuck some lighting on it. And then I take a quick shot with the camera and look at it. And I can see where the shadows are. Oh, there's, there's a big chunk of it that's in the background that's pretty dark so I can I can avoid that and I'll build something that's going to sit in the light and and just focus on that I'm doing that more and more um, it's becoming quicker and and more loose than it used to be so this was like a one where I've consciously gone and tried to look at uh, shadows on the ground which meant like a high angle shot and I haven't done much of that prior to this shot because I find that the way that it squishes the minifigure down in the shot is like I tend to it's hard to resist a really nice minifigure portrait and so they're the type of photos that I keep doing and yet I want to try photos with nice really nice shadows on the ground it just means sacrificing the, the minifigures you sort of just see his helmet his backpack and his shoulders he's squished into almost like just a blob I actually took a couple of portraits of just normal setup, landscape, sort of horizontal angle with the camera, with this setup and the lighting, and it it didn't look as nice as these photos. I, I'm so I'm so addicted to how minifigures are cute and how cool they look that I've got to really force myself to <laughs> to say no. This time I'm going to do I'm going to experiment with what I want to experiment, and that's having shadows on the ground in like a really mysterious, really eerie sort of way. So I sort of stuck with that, tried to focus. <laughs> and in looking at the 
the standard portrait of the astronaut in this scene, it didn't look as exciting as, as this top-down shot did. So that really helped me go, oh, okay, yeah, I get it now, I get it. Like, if I put what I really like to see aside, I can discover something new, something new and interesting, and it works. It's not going to work all the time, but there's some cool stuff in there that you haven't tried yet. The scene is like a couple of the base plates with tiles on them, and then up the top of the picture, out of shot, is a row of, I think it's the window, the, I'm not sure of the part number, the windows where there's sort of like three panes, and I used, I think it was, it looks like one, but I have a feeling it was two of those cheap LED lights, because in this shot I wanted that bright, kind of spacey looking light that you see in a lot of movies like Interstellar kind of centered the the lights in roughly in more or less the middle i guess maybe it's off to the side i've lifted up some tiles on the edges just to add a, an element that doesn't overly make sense so it just adds to the mystery if it's all tiled it looks nice and perfect but if there's already a couple of random things there with the piano and the astronaut if there's a something else that's random it, i feel like it ramps up the mystery of the photo Those ideas that you have where it's almost fully formed and it's you can you can see it in your head. I look at a lot of um, concept art for for movies, and this just came into my head where it was from the Lego Movie Two. There's so much narrative and comedic sort of stuff in there, so I thought, what if I don't know? It just came into my head. It's really weird, like. What if there was a, a deleted scene in the movie where, you know, they got suddenly really dark and they were actually going to like interrogate, like they captured one of these cute Duplo figs and they were going to like interrogate it for information. What would it look like? So the lights coming from the right hand side, um, I think that was my desk lamp. And then I built plates and things on the right hand wall to shadow the foreground. I think I added a few beams to across the roof to get those horizontal lines. Those sort of shadows, like I just love the angle of those. I tried it with a nice horizontal shot and then tried it one with like a kind of a Dutch angle and it looked a whole lot more creepy with the angle. Once I hit that, it just seemed to work. And then the final sort of part was probably in post-production. The figures in the foreground was still relatively bright. They were shadowed, but probably only 50% sort of thing. So I've gone in with the burn tool in Photoshop and just deepened the shadows in the foreground figures. The final thing actually was when I was setting up the shot and I had the light streaming in, I made sure that Wild Style's knife is actually silhouetted against the bright floor because I thought that's, that's really important to the narrative. You can still have the figures there in the foreground looking menacing as silhouettes, but the addition of the knife just seemed to ramp it up. All those elements just seemed to come together in the end, and it, it was one of those pictures that really went together really easily and it ended up looking pretty much like it did in my head. <laughs> and I just wish that all my photos could be like that. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted that classic noir movie look where it's like there's a central character and they're looking off camera and there's some threatening shadows on the wall behind them. So what, what I did was set up a couple of figures to her left out of shot. They had to be really close to actually have a decent sized shadow for the shadows to be quite big behind her. I'm sort of shooting low down in a low angle. So I'm looking up at her, which means the shadows behind her need to be even bigger still. The figures were like just probably five millimeters outside of the shot. <laughs> so they're really close. And I tried two figures at first because I wanted the story to be she's confronting two thugs or something. And I found that whenever I set up a light source, if it was one or two lights, two seemed to throw too many shadows out. So I think I've used the one desk lamp and I found I couldn't get the shadows from the two figures within that sort of space on the wall. What I did is took one of the figures off and one of the shadows on the wall is actually hers. It kind of looked really cool in the camera. And then I noticed if you look down at her, at her feet, you can see her shadow trailing from her feet back to the wall. So it kind of looked a bit like a giveaway. So I've cropped out her feet and just crossed my fingers that it's not too obvious that it's actually her shadow. <laughs> it's her own shadow on the wall. 
I was hoping that it works just because you're drawn to her face. Her face is, is quite bright. It could be one of the brightest parts of the image. So you're drawn to her face and her gaze. And then you're just, you're noticing that there's shadows of figures behind her. And that's enough to sort of sell the picture with, with the smoke and mirrors that it is. You could probably guess what's happening, but I think I was hoping that there was enough narrative that that sort of like, it, it kind of doesn't make too much sense. It's not technically accurate, but just there's enough emotion there that you're taken in with the emotion and you're not analyzing all, all of the details. The other thing that came out with these black and white experiments is the reflections in the bricks, which kind of really annoyed me because <laughs> they're sort of random. The wall on the left side, and it's got weirdly shaped reflections, I think bouncing off the other wall or maybe off the camera. Halfway down the staircase, there's a really bright little spot of light <laughs> on the sphere. There's a nice sort of horizontal a terminator coming down and then it's it's lit from underneath, which looks really cool. And then there's a random spot there. So when I was looking at looking at the photos on a computer, it just seemed really annoying. They they seem really distracting. I don't know, maybe it's not not that big a deal to other people when they see them, but I thought, ah, oh, it's kind of it could be cool if you could control it, if you could bounce reflected light onto something, onto a focal point or like an object or a face or something. This is where my laziness comes in, where if I was more patient, if I photoshopped out the Lego drawers in the background and put some kind of sci-fi sky or something there, this could have been a really awesome photo, but I can't bring myself to spend hours on it. <laughs> I could have just grab some of the cardboard, didn't think of it. So this is directly like inspired from um, a shot from an old black and white movie called The Cat People, where there's a woman on a staircase and the statue and the woman's face are both facing off camera in the same direction. So there's a connection. You form a narrative connection between the two. They become almost like it's a symbol. So I just wanted to completely rip off that. I think the figure, I think uh, I started with the blue, the blue dress on the figure. I think she had different hair. I think I wanted more of a, to suggest like an older lady, because I thought it would be a nice contrast, a really fierce statue on one side, and then an older, a bit more unsuspecting, older, potentially frail old lady, but the two are, the two are connected. But then, and I said, just, just by accident, hang on a sec. So the statue is mostly red with a couple of blue paint details, blue and white. And the figure's got a mostly blue dress on and she's got a red necklace. And I thought, well, if I make her hair red, then the colors sort of connect. They share the same colors, just a bit reversed in their amounts. That was just, just totally an accident. After I shot that photo, it got me started thinking, I need to think about not just about light and shadow and, and things like camera angles, but also colors. And then I've gone, wow, that's this is getting like really big now. <laughs> there's so much to, to think about, there's so much to plan, there's so much to test. There's this whole world, like Lego photography world now, that it's sort of moving past what you can build, what parts or technique you've got in the build with what colours are there, what's the, what's the narrative, what's the tonal range. So it just seemed like after this photo, I felt like, man, there's so much to learn and to play with. That was a great talk I had with Shannon. I hope you all got something from that. I loved when he said he had to stop himself from taking portraits in order to learn something new. That's something I need to think about the next time I shoot because I too always feel the need to frame minifigs fully and eye level. If you like this kind of video, please let me know in the comments. And if you have a favorite toy photographer that you'd like me to interview, send them a link to this video and ask them to reach out to me. Thanks a lot for sticking around. This is 4 Bricks Tall. Catch you later.